Welcome to Believer's Channel 2. I'm Pastor Russ. Today we'll be talking about Rosh Hashanah. And before we get into that, I'd like to remind you there's a thumbs up button. When you hit that, it helps us a lot. And also become a subscriber because as a subscriber, you'll be like a part of the ministry. And every time somebody comes to Jesus through the ministry, you'll get credit for it in heaven. So be there with us. Be a subscriber. Now let's get to today's message. Rosh Hashanah. Jesus talked about many things and everything he talked about meant something and it referred to something. And Rosh Hashanah is one of them. And we're gonna go back to the book of Leviticus 23:23, and see what God said about Rosh Hashanah then and then what, how Jesus referred to it. Now Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, head of the new year, and the rapture. So these three things are very important and I know everybody wants to know about them. Leviticus 23, 23. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, in the seventh month on the first day, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing the trumpets, a holy con con convocation. You shall do you shall do no customary work on it, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. So in Matthew 24, 36, uh, it says, But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. They knew what he was talking about. They knew exactly what he was talking about. They were talking, he was talking about Rosh Hashanah because there's seven feasts. Jesus has to fulfill them all. He fulfilled the first four spring feasts when he went to the cross, went, went, uh, went into the tomb and rose from the dead. He, he fulfilled four feasts right there. There's three more to fulfill and they are the fall feasts. Rosh Hashanah is a big one because when it talks about the trumpets, the trumpets have to blow to usher in the king, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings. So Rosh Hashanah is very important and it points to the rapture. Now Jesus said, but of that day and hour, no one knows. Why did he say that? Because out of all the feasts, out of the seven feasts, Rosh Hashanah is the only one you don't know when it's going to start. You don't know the day or the hour. We know the season because Jesus told us we would know the season because Israel became a nation and it was referred to as the fig tree coming to blossom. So that told us that we are now in, in the era of fulfilling these, four, these three feasts at the very end. This is when we know we, we should be looking up and asking God to forgive us for all of our sins. Every day, be looking up because something's gonna happen. And he tells us, look up because it'll happen, you'll see in the sky. But of that day and hour, no one knows. What happens on the, the only feast where they don't know the day and hour, Rosh Hashanah, what happens is they send a man out, maybe the next mountain over, he looks up or watches in the sky because he, he's a watcher. And when he's watching in the sky and he sees a little sliver of the moon, see this is something they don't have to do in any other feast, but he has to see that little sliver of the moon. And when he sees it, he's to blow his shofar. And a man behind him on another mountain on the way to Israel, the temple, he hears the shofar, so he blows his indicating that little sliver of the moon has been seen. And when it gets back to the temple, a hundred shofars will blow, indicating today is the day of Rosh Hashanah. This is the hour. And all of Israel hears those shofars. And all of Israel stops what they're doing and starts uh, the holiday of Rosh Hashanah. That's why 
Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour. And that's why he says, look up. The watchers have to be looking up for Jesus' return. They needed to be looking up to see that little sliver of moon. Now, when Jesus comes back, the church is going to be gone. He's, he's not really coming back the second time. He's coming for the church. And he won't be visibly seen on earth. He'll be up in the on a cloud. And, he, and the trumpets will blow, just as Rosh Hashanah says. And when the last trump blows, all the church will be gone. All those who are in Jesus will be gone. All those who have a relationship with him will be gone. See, the five virgins, when he told that story, he was, was referring to five women in the church. They were good women. They did everything right. They were always busy, too busy to have a relationship with Jesus. But when he comes for the church in that rapture and he yells, come, come up hither, the whole church age comes to an end and the church is gone. And at that time, the Jews will take over again. See, it was meant for the Jews to go throughout the world preaching the good news, but they rejected it. It's going to go back to the beginning and what God meant it to be in the first place. And 144,000 Jews are being made ready for that moment. And they will take, they will be sealed by God and take the word of God throughout the world while we're in heaven for seven years. You don't want to miss this. You don't want to be left behind in that tribulation. Uh, that's a, that'll be a nightmare. The one way to be sure you're going to go is to accept Jesus. Repeat after me this prayer. Father God, I'm a sinner. I believe what Jesus did for me on the cross will set me free. I believe his blood will wash me clean. And Father, I ask that you accept me into heaven. I ask that my sins be forgiven. I don't want to miss the rapture. And if I should die before the rapture, I wish to be taken up into heaven that moment. So Father God, please forgive me. In Yeshua Jesus' name, Jesus, my Lord and Savior, in his name, please forgive me. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, all your sins are behind you. They're gone. God dropped them in the deepest part of the ocean so they'll never be brought up again. Only you can bring them back up. And if you do and you go back to what you were doing, well, you're putting your life, as your salvation at risk. You're putting everything at risk. Get that relationship going with Jesus and you won't go back to your old sinful life. Now I'd like to bless you. May God bless you, may he keep you, may his face shine upon you, and may his kindness lift you up every day. Hallelujah. God bless you.